Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tiny Lady T. I just finished work. It's about 6.30. And guess what? I've been doing something simple tonight. I've been eating kind of heavy for the past three days. I'm just going to do a batch of tuna fish and eat it on some lettuce, some romaine lettuce. I'm going to call them lettuce boats. So let's get to doing I'm watching the news. I haven't watched the news all day, so I'm catching up on the news. Um, they're getting ready to crack on, crack down on people who are hoarding and who are uh, hijacking these um, trucks. That support, that's you know, transporting goods like paper towel and stuff. They're actually hijacking these trucks. I'm gonna tell you, in the devil always busy. When something is going on as horrific as this crisis that we're going through, you got jokers out there, the spirit of the devil. When we come against it and rebuke it, my God, always trying to get an opportunity. Anyway, let's make some tuna fish.
Hey, what's up everybody? I just wanted to pop in and say, hey, I know, plain Jane. That's the, the beauty of being able to work remote from home. You ain't got to put on all the makeup. Yeah, but anyway, it'll be all right. Um, I'm just all natural, aren't I? Anyway, y'all, I wanted to just pop in and say, hey, everything is doing well over here on my end. I pray again for all the frontline essential workers from truck drivers to healthcare providers to daycare workers, um, grandmas, grandpas, aunt, aunties, uh, everybody. Um, keeping everybody lifted up in prayer. But uh, y'all, I just wanted to just drop in and just say, just remember to be encouraged. And uh, I was listening to a radio station that I listened to in the morning. And uh, they were just talking about being uh, encouraged that, you know, God will provide. And they were just talking about in Exodus where, you know, the people became restless and grumbling. They were wishing they were back in Egypt because they felt like they could do what they wanted as far as eating, as far as going here and there. And now here it is. They've been brought out of Egypt, out of that bondage, and they have been taken into a wilderness in the name of the the name of the land was called Sin, S-I-N. And I got this, I said, well, let me go, you know me. I, I said, let me go on and get into, because I, you know, I read the story about how Moses came to set the captives free and da 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 uh, Or, you know, the children of Israel free from the bondage and slavery of Israel from Pharaoh and all that. So I had, you know, I've read that many a times. And it's amazing about the word that when you get into the word, like, like I said, the word is a living, breathing word. And you could read that word five years ago, but then it becomes more applicable to what we are now going through now uh, uh, about, you know, shortages of food and not being able to move and, and do what you want, have that freedom in a lot of places here around the world, we're on lockdown, we're on quarantine, we're on, you know, staying in the homes, uh, under curfew, you know, so all this is happening now. And the segue or correlation was, is that when I was reading again, Exodus chapter 16 and 17, awesome stuff in there. And like I said, I, I share and speak with y'all on how God just drops stuff in my spirit as I'm reading and studying his word. And I said, in that something, even through all of that, and I ask that, you know, in your spare time, read, read those chapters, Exodus 16 and 17, and see how it ministers to you as it relates to when, when we're taking out of our comfort zone, out of the familiar, and that's what is happening with the children of Israel. See, they were so familiar with being enslaved that when they were pulled out of it for freedom's sake, they wish they could go back because at least they had as much meat as they wanted. And so now they were at a state where they truly had to depend on God to provide the bread from heaven, the manna. And so when you just look at and read that and how, oh my God, how, how God gave an instruction and, and he was looking to them to see if they were going to follow instruction that he was going to pour down bread from heaven that he will provide you with as much as you needed and there was one part in there when it was re when i was reading it said every day they had to go and get their daily bread in other words they were to get what they needed and anybody who got more than what they actually needed it was not considered excess and those who got little was not shortfalled. In other words, there was not a shortfall. So even what they partook in and what they got every day, it was enough. It was sufficient. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, we'll have to get into that. Um, I'm just taking my little 15 minute break and I did my exercises. And um, but anyway, I just wanted to come in and just say, just be encouraged and even in this time that we're in, where we feel like we're not going to have enough. Oh my God, it just dropped in my spirit. Our God is more than enough. He is more than enough. And I just thank God that he had me listening 
And I was able to grab that and go to the word and see how faithful God is. Now, the children of Israel didn't look at it that way. They was upset and mad because they didn't have food and all that at their fingertips because God had taken them to a place that he was going to provide. Every day he rained down bread from heaven. Isn't that something? And again, there's a lot of other stuff going on in chapter 16 and 17. But I'm here to tell you, just read it in your spare time and let it just wash over you to encourage you. Although it seems there's a famine in the land, it's visible. We know it's here. But trust in God to know that he will provide and what God has for each one of us on a day-to-day -day basis is sufficient. So it also speaks to don't be hoarding, don't be getting more than what you need because God is more than enough. If you trust him, and I know we all feel that sense of panic because I felt that way yesterday. I'm like, ooh, I'm getting kind of low on toilet paper. And I went to three places and they were out. But I looked, how about all the way in the back of my cabinet, there was 12 rolls of toilet paper that I had got probably a month or so ago when I went to, um, when I was buying stuff for my mama's birthday bash. And y'all know what that was. That was on, uh, well, about three weeks ago. And so I said, look at there, look at there. So I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I can keep on keeping on for a little while longer. And, you know, as I need other stuff, I will replenish it. I will get what I need. Because even in the text, it says, if you get too much of, uh, uh, of this, if you don't use it, it'll rot and have maggots on it. And there was a instance in there and that's what happened people were getting too much than what they were supposed to and the next day maggots and all that had got to it so even in this time even in this time y'all hear what i'm saying even in this time god would give us the what we need what he gives us is sufficient so when we go out here and go shopping just use wisdom because what that means is when you when you do over the amount that you need, you're really taking away from somebody else. You really are. So anyway, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. That, that just pricked my spirit this morning when I heard them talking about that. And I thought, you know what, let me go get in this word and read this thing. Because like I said, it was like, go read it, Tanya. And that way you can get on here and encourage others. And like I said, what God puts in your spirit concerning Exodus 16 and 17 Oh, let him minister to you. But anyway, that was just a blessing to me because like I said, I felt myself thinking, oh, I need to I need to stock up some more because they, they're they're shutting down people and, you know, more and more people are getting affected. So I <laughs> I got that feeling and I thought, OK, OK, settle yourself. And then right when I was feeling that I was happened to be listening to that program. And I said, wow. And like I said, that's why I love getting into the word. As I get older, I am using the wisdom. Getting into the word of God is such a comfort. Didn't he say, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me? Oh, hear me, y'all. Hear me. And y'all, like I said, y'all just be encouraged. Look, no matter where you are, if you are at the top of a mountain or the belly of a whale, you can worship God in spirit and in truth. Oh, yes, we love assailing ourselves one to another in the house of the Lord, in the church. But guess what? We are the church, aren't we? And we may not be able to go to the church house and assemble with everyone. But be faithful. Send, make sure your tithe still goes to that to that uh, church that you are giving to so that there's no lack in the house. Amen. When everything gets back to some normalcy, but don't feel bad. Don't feel uh, uh, like you're betraying God because you want to use wisdom and not put yourself in harm's way because you may be fine. You may be in that group that you uh, may not get infected. But then if you're around the older people who are who 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 are in that uh, group that can uh, be harmed and they catch it, you know what I mean? So, again, again, I'm not telling nobody what to do other than to 
use wisdom. Ask God for wisdom and knowledge because he, give he gives it to us freely. But anyway, y'all, let me go. I got to get law back on and then before long it'll be lunch. But anyway, I love y'all so much. Be encouraged. May God bless you and the peace of the Lord be with you. Bye, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got love mail opening coming up next on the next video. Love y'all.